So I'm here to talk about appraisals, why they're done, why they're relevant with property purchases. If you are financing any purchase, your bank is gonna do an appraisal on the property because they don't wanna make a loan on something that's not worth the value. So they're gonna send an appraiser that's usually an independent person, not somebody that's affiliated with the bank directly. First of all, they have the contract of sale in front of them, so they have an arm's length transaction to work off of. So if there's a contract of sale for $1.5 million, then they can sort of rely on the fact that the parties have negotiated that and that there's been no funny business and that it actually is a true fair market value arm's length, but they still have to appraise the property because what happens sometimes is that there's fierce bidding competitions and bidding wars that happen with very sought after properties and somebody could be required to pay 10, 20, even 30% over the list price in order to get something that they really want. In those situations, sometimes an appraiser comes along and it might not necessarily appraise. Um, a good agent will always show up at the appraisal, which I always do whether I'm representing the seller or a buyer, because if I'm representing the seller, I want it to appraise if the buyer has a financing contingency because that could allow the buyer to get out of the deal if, they, if the property doesn't appraise. But if there's no financing contingency, I don't want the buyer walking away feeling like they had to pay more or that they overspent because it didn't appraise. If for some reason the property doesn't appraise, which is very rare right now because there are enough comps out there to support what's been going on and the market's been up and down, then if you're a buyer and you don't have a financing contingency and you've got, you're in contract for something for 1.5 million and it appraises for 1.4 million, you've got to come up with a difference between the, the 100,000 that your bank is not willing to loan on. If you do have a financing contingency, you can actually then go back to the table with the seller and say, hey, it didn't appraise. I have a financing contingency, so my mortgage contingency is gonna allow me to get out of the deal unless we renegotiate this because obviously I overspent, um, at least according to this appraiser. In New York City, it's very important to use a New York lender and somebody that's accustomed to doing co-ops and condos because what I've found over the years with vast experience is that if a buyer uses a lender that's not accustomed to New York real estate, they're also gonna get an appraiser who's not necessarily accustomed to New York City real estate. Oftentimes they're gonna come from the suburbs and they really don't know how to appraise a property in vertical living. So the appraisal is a huge part of the transaction if there's financing. If there's no financing and it's a cash deal, there's no appraisal. But it's a major, major part of the process and the transaction where there's financing involved. You have to ensure um, as an agent that you're coming to the table with the right comps to make the appraiser's job easier and anything else they need to do their job. Of course, including the contract of sale, which has the arm's length sale price in it, which gives the appraiser a basis for which to start their appraisal.